What should we be when we grow up? From childhood to adulthood, I dreamed of working in television news that may put you to help preferably as a reporter turned news anchor. It's finally here. Tonight on WBRY. So, since my senior year as a broadcast journalism student in 2010, up until now, I've tirelessly applied to hundreds of positions within broadcast media, but I have yet to land a job. Let's face it, the process of applying to jobs and waiting on a response of any kind can be daunting and, after a while, quite discouraging. But in this field, it seems that even the most qualified applicants have a rough time getting their first job in a television station. So, I decided to find out if other broadcast students who plan to work in television news were having the same difficulty as me. I also tried my luck with contacting people who influence hiring decisions in newsrooms around the South Florida area, which has been my place of residence for the past two years while I pursue a master's degree in broadcast communication. My goal was to talk with them and find out what they look for in entry-level applicants. It's no secret how much the internet has changed the way in which we access news and spoiled us by making content available anytime and almost anywhere. But for media managers and broadcast communication students, this change is affecting the skills, experience, and apparently the type of applicants that television news stations need in order to maintain in the evolving state of media. Here is what I discovered. First thing I'm going to look for is a resume, and the biggest thing I am looking for is more of your practical experience. It's whether, you know, if you wrote for your college newspaper or you've been working with the college television station, things like that are what I tend to look for. Um, you know, we, we receive, I receive applications constantly throughout the year, and some of them won't have any sort of broadcast experience within them. If it's an on-air role, that's a completely separate animal. Uh, I'm looking at experience, um, what they bring to the table, uh, what's their life experience, um, how good are they in front of the camera, how natural are they. Um, I look for people who stand out. Sometimes it's hard because you're not sure what they're looking for. If they're not telling what they're looking for, then I don't know what to do with them. And those tend to have a lesser chance. But what we tend, what I tend to look for is these is skills within both that print side and that broadcast side and interest in one or the other. Since skills and experience can vary from station to station, after reviewing about 20 job announcements that were posted this year, 2013, I concluded that the most listed requirements were for applicants to have at least one year of professional experience, strong writing skills for television and the web, nonlinear editing software experience, and the ability to work as a one-man band. I know what you're thinking. I'm still a student, so how is it possible for me to get actual newsroom experience? Get involved! Like Mr. Kanda mentioned, he wants to see that students have taken advantage of the opportunities they have on campus, such as the campus newspaper, a radio or television station. An internship is a student's gateway into the real world and provides hands-on experience that goes beyond a classroom. Right now, I participate in the Barry University newspaper, The Buccaneer. I am a staff photographer. I'm currently interning at the Miami Beach Chamber of Commerce. I am assisting the marketing and communications team there. So we will do things like uh, social media posting, as well as I would help with the video. We would shoot video of various chambers event, and also I would help edit the video. Um, I've also helped design graphics on Photoshop and help develop kind of communication strategies and things like that. This is just the editing department and what I do is what other editors do. So do you think interning is giving you the real world experience that you'll need after you graduate? Yeah, I definitely think that um, interning will give me the experience that I need due to the fact that I know what's going on inside and out of the company. It's important to have an internship under your belt, but just like entry level jobs, they can be difficult to get. Um, I reached out to Channel 7, but never heard anything back. I also reached out to WPLG, um, also never really heard anything back. Channel 4, 
they also got, they, I applied to them and they got back to me. So I also interviewed there. As, as I can recall, over the summer, I applied to two um, internships. One was Viacom, never heard from them. So I don't know if I was accepted or rejected. One thing to keep in mind is that the level of difficulty may increase or decrease depending on the station's rank in its media market. Josu is a senior who is currently applying to entry-level production jobs at television news stations here in South Florida. Right now, I'm at the school library and I'm applying to some jobs. Hopefully, I hear back from them. Is school getting the best of you? Well. So far, we've learned that having some practical experience is absolutely necessary, but the two hiring managers I interviewed always found a way to bring up an applicant's personal attributes in almost every answer they gave. What I'm looking for is um, not only experience, but confidence, um, willingness. Uh, yeah, I look at your ability, but I want to know that you're willing and you want to grow and you want to be pushed and you want to try different things. Um, I can't get you to want something, um, but if you do want it, I can help get you there. Uh, in terms of software and things like that, you know, it's constantly evolving. You know, it helps if you have some familiarity with, you know, video editing program, or if you've seen, you know, iUser NPS, if you've seen a rundown before that you can recognize what you're looking at. But things like that can be, you know, we can teach those things. Uh, so I'm obviously, I always look for experience, but I want more than that. I want someone that we can connect with, someone who's going to give everything they've got uh, and is not only vested in this station, but invested in the process and wanting to constantly be better and do more. As of right now, I'm in between breaks of classes today, and I applied to some TV stations two weeks ago, and I'm looking at if I receive any updates. So who were some of the other uh, stations that you applied to besides um, NBC? Besides um, NBC, I applied to CBS and the local 10 News and um, Channel 7 News. Okay. Once you've gone onto the portal and made an application, uh, all of that information uh, automatically through some you know, magic of computers uh, goes to our HR department and ultimately uh, to me uh, and to whomever it is that will be the direct supervisor for that person. Uh, once we get those applications, uh, we go through uh, and we review them. And then um, I believe in getting back to people usually not as quickly as I'd like, but I really think it's important to get back to people and let them know one way or the other. If you have no experience, I can't hire you to work in television news. It's just not gonna happen. Um, good luck. Hi. Hey. Because of the distance and location, I used Skype to reach out to David Janot, a former staff member from Barry University, who is now a reporter in North Carolina. I wanted to compare the path he took to become a reporter and the skills he think helped him the most with what I was learning from Ms. Rodan and Mr. Kanda. David told me he interned while pursuing a bachelor's degree in electronic media and broadcast public relations in Iowa. He also participated at his campus television station. While working at Barry University, he decided to take one of former reporter Connie Hicks' classes to get more broadcast television training. Then, one day, a friend from the Miami Herald advised David to apply to the reporter trainee position at NBC6, which turned out to be a rewarding experience. It was during this time, as a trainee, that David was able to report on numerous stories, which he used to make a professional demo reel. David attributes his proven ability to write, edit, operate a camera, and be confident on air to him becoming a reporter. The field of broadcast media is multifaceted. Let's see. There's the writers in the newsroom piecing important facts together to create an interesting story to appease our short attention span. Then there's the reporters who are out in the field investigating stories and conducting interviews to be included in the next broadcast. Next, you have different levels of producers whose main focus is on creating a cohesive show lineup for the news anchors to present to viewers. 
the producers report to people like Liz Rodin, the news director at CBS4. These positions are by no means all-inclusive. There's a hierarchy of numerous jobs just inside of the newsroom, and everyone's trying to work their way up. Therefore, it's important to continuously be willing to learn. Once you get your first entry-level job, it's only a matter of time before a more ideal position becomes available. Hello, I'm Bill Albin, and on behalf of Expert Village, I'm going to teach you what you need to know to be a local news reporter. There are numerous video tutorials with people who claim to know exactly what it takes to break into the broadcast media industry. Even for myself, I've always thought that if I do this or if I do that, then I'm sure to make it. But the truth seems to be that there is no perfect formula or path to get you there. So, in a nutshell, here's what I discovered about what hiring managers at news stations are looking for in entry-level applicants. Some practical newsroom experience is needed by way of an internship or through campus media opportunities. Also, interning serves as a great way to network. It is beneficial to know someone who actually works in the media industry. They might help that if you know someone because they can put it on that, the person who's making that decision, they can just slip it onto their desk that way instead of them having to weed through dozens and dozens of emails. Liz Rodan talked about all of the submissions they receive through their career portal, and it's common for ideal applicants to get lost in the shuffle. So, getting to know influential people in the industry can be the difference between you and someone who has a more professional experience getting a job. Social sites like Twitter, Facebook, especially LinkedIn, are great ways to connect with media professionals. Your passion to work in television news must be evident. If indeed you are passionate, like David Janot, you'll find ways to build upon your knowledge base and make sure you're submitting what you know to be a resume, portfolio, or demo reel that truly reflects what you can offer the company with an objective that clearly states your goal. You must be willing to learn. This is especially important when it comes to the different types of programs or software that may be used in the newsroom. For instance, Chosu was certain that Final Cut Pro, a brand of nonlinear editing software, was phasing out, while other software such as Avid and Aurora are what he thought hiring managers prefer applicants to be proficient with using. I think Avid pretty much gonna, will, will prepare me to like learn any other like editing softwares because um, the, the, the learning curve for Avid is way more well, Rodin declined to give preference to a specific brand of editing software, and Mr. Kanda didn't give a direct answer, which is understandable since updated versions and new types of editing software altogether come out each year. Therefore, don't settle for what you already know how to do. There's always something new to learn, and whatever it is, in order for you to be successful, you should have the willingness to learn it. And finally, it's important that you're able to perform different skills, such as writing well for television and the web, operating a camera, and editing. You know, being a one-man band. Keep doing what you're doing and talk. Okay. Lastly, what are you filming this for real? <laughs> are you nervous? Uh, audio and everything? No, no. Okay. Um, yeah. edit. Okay. If you guys haven't already heard, I'm having a house party on Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> Jared, I didn't know it was coming. I knew it was coming.